Hi, welcome back to another season, actually the first season of Way of the Wrench. And uh, what better way to start off with uh, a new project. So what we are going to be making is a Raspberry Pi powered arcade cabinet. Um, I'm a child of the 80s and the early 90s and I plunked way too many quarters into those things. And um, I don't know why it's taken me so long to make one of these arcade cabinets, but um, we're going to do it now. So uh, join with me here and uh, we're going to make a cool video and I'm going to try to document the whole process and um, really try to really customize this as much as I can uh, with a bunch of new features. Stay with us. So first off, by no means am I trying to step on anyone's shoulders. There is a ton of people out there making cabinets, either complete businesses doing their own high-end cabinets or just the regular DIY. Um, I'm going to try to create something different and more that something that I want with the features that I want uh, and a lot of things um, that I still haven't seen on cabinets yet. So uh, I'd like to make that with you guys. So first off, um, the big thing for me is I want an arcade cabinet full size, however, I want this thing to be somewhat portable for two reasons. Um, so I'm going to design the control panel to be removable. First reason is literally I want to be able to get this through doors. So I've got to stick within that 32 inches so I can get through standard door frames. Uh, and then the other one is going to be so that I can literally disconnect the control panel very quite easily within a couple of minutes and take it to a buddy's house hook up an HDMI cable, plug in the power source, and I am gaming on top of somebody's coffee table in the house. So that's the, the first thing I want to do. Um, second thing is I kind of want to try to keep this as cheap as possible. I don't want to buy everything brand new and spend a ton of money. So I have a friend that gave me a 32 inch TV. Thank you, Graham. I uh, had a problem with the volume button going down on it. So we took the frame apart and desoldered the volume down button on the side and put in a new little momentary switch, tactile switch, and it's uh, completely fixed. So we have a free 32 inch TV. Um, I want this to be a clean looking control panel. I see a lot of them out there, especially the main cabinets, where there's just way too many buttons, way too much going on. So I'm going to stick to a two player cabinet look. So I'll have the joystick, uh, eight buttons. I know we don't need eight buttons unless you're doing like PlayStation 1 or any other um, newer consoles, but uh, I'm going to put the eight buttons in. Uh, I can always use those seven and eighth button near the, the center for um, other features such as mouse buttons or trackball buttons. So I'm going to make it look like a two-player cabinet. Um, however, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some USB pass-throughs sockets and put them on the sides of the control panels. So that way, if you want to have three-player four game uh, for Simpsons, Turtles, that kind of stuff, you can just plug in a USB controller and, and you're off. Uh, also down the road, if I do light guns, that would also be where you would plug in the USB for the light guns. Uh, I do want to put a trackball. So uh, there's a lot of cool games out there, Marble Madness, uh, Crystal Castles, any of the golf games, bowling games, um, they use that trackball. So I am going to be putting in a trackball right in between the two players, uh, so I've got that games as well. Um, I'm going to see once it's installed whether I can do a lot of the games that require spinners with the trackball. If I can't, then I probably will be putting in a, um, a spinner down the road. And there are some cool companies out there that can even have removable steering wheels. So if you want to do some car racing games, that works out pretty good too. Uh, another thing I want to do is I want to have some LED lighting so you can get some pretty cool looking program, programmable uh, LED strips. I want to put that on the back of the cabinet and possibly under the panel or underneath the, the cabinet itself. So that you get this nice kind of glow coming out from the machine. Um, so you don't actually see the light bulbs or the LEDs themselves but you see the glow coming out. I think that looks pretty trick. Now another thing that I want to do and I've seen a couple so far out there is with 
a digital marquee. So the marquee is the, the artwork stating what the game is on the top. Um, I would like to make a digital one so that as you're switching the games, uh, it will actually automatically change the artwork, put up the original artwork for the game. And I think that just has a, a really cool feature. Um, have to look into that a little bit more and see what programs will actually let you do that. I know Hyper Spin has a um, Hyper Marquee that can do that. So that may be something down the road where we customize this when we're getting close to done. Uh, the other thing that's holding me back on that is to find a wide ratio uh, monitor is quite expensive. So I'm gonna see about uh, either picking one up for cheap or modifying something to make it work. Now, um, Beside that, we still have to get a bunch of those parts and um, start looking at design and that before we even get going. So there's my idea. That's what I'm going to do. I, I don't want to download anybody's PDFs and just copy them. Uh, I don't need any basic woodworking skill skills to be built on that. I would rather do something more custom. Uh, that way I've got a personal connection to this machine uh, and I think I can do some tweaks and changes that I would really like. So. That's the plan. Uh, the next video, stay tuned, we'll be showing off our parts as we get them. Okay, thank you. See ya.